Professor Peter Crampton, you spoke tonight on the need for us to talk about health in New Zealand as a public health issue, to bring a public health perspective on health. What exactly do you mean by that? Two things. Firstly, um, I commented that I believe access to health services should be viewed as a right of citizenship and that we should not use market mechanisms as the key rationing mechanism for access to the full range of basic health services. Secondly, using the term public health in a slightly different way, I believe that we ha need to have adopt a broad view towards what generates poor health and what generates and encourages good health. That's the public health point of view. So, for example, picking up on one of the talks tonight, the eating environment has changed profoundly over the last 20 or so years. We in health need to take that point very seriously. And if there's been a massive re-engineering of the eating environment, prompting in large part the um, startling obesity epidemic, epidemic link that we have, then the response to that has to be a reverse engineering of the eating environment, however challenging that may seem. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, you're saying that um, health issues are fundamentally a social and political issue, not a medical issue? I'm saying that, yeah, absolutely that, that health is um, politics writ large. You talked about the incredible complexity um, of our health system, yet also commented that <coughs> there was quite an active public discussion of health in New Zealand compared to overseas countries. Um, if our health system is so self-evidently complex and not always working well, why are the reforms not also self-evident? Um, why have we got this complexity? We have the complexity, I think, for two or three reasons. Firstly, because we have a culturally embedded belief that there are structural solutions to health policy problems. So we tend to restructure to try and solve problems, and those restructurings almost always lead to more complexity. And secondly, because we run a pretty lean system, and we seek to gain efficiency, that is getting more for unit of expenditure, by, um, by structural means. And again, that pushes towards more complexity. But what's holding back reforms then? I mean, you've spent a lifetime researching this. Presumably you've got some very clear ideas of what um, needs to happen. You touched on a few tonight and had to skip over um, pages of your PowerPoint where you had lots of ideas. Um, if you've got research-based ideas about reform, um, what's holding reforms back? Nothing holds reforms back. We have, as I commented before, probably the most reformed health system in the <laughs> world. So, no, we're, we're not inhibited about reforms. To some extent, many of the issues that we like to worry about are irresolvable. And I would say it's less about reaching a destination, more about how well we travel. So we're dealing how with... The, unpacking that? Yeah. Well, we're dealing with a set of issues which don't lend themselves to a, des a policy destination. Or a, or a solution. Mm. The irreconcilable issues to do with rationing, who gets what and how much of what, how much does society want to spend on health, how much of our national wealth do we want to devote to health services. None of those issues lend themselves to a definitive answer at any point in time. That's why I say it's how we travel. We as a society have this rich debate and discussion about um, how much we value health and what proportion of our collective resources we're prepared, we're prepared to devote to health. And yet the people who suffer most are often the most disenfranchised and don't participate in that public discourse. How, you talked about public health as an ethical issue, as, as did the other <coughs> speakers, um, not just an economic cost um, issue. How do we increase participation? What can ordinary um, people do to participate in this public discussion? which seems enormously, as you say, enormously complex. I think by and large the New Zealand public is engaged in the health system, in the health system debates. Um, information in, uh, presented in a digestible way helps. Um, there's plenty of lobby groups engaged in health issues. Um, the point you made is dead right. Those most vulnerable to ill health 
tend to be the poorest in society and often the least engaged. And I think we need to keep an eye on that all the time. So you're saying advocacy? You're asking me how to encourage robust public debate on the issues which are most pressing to the health system. Yes, well, you're saying public health needs to be geared to the most vulnerable. There's an ethical mm. component to mm. it and so on. And yet by definition, or perhaps not by definition, but the most vulnerable are least mm. likely to participate. Oh, yeah, no, so I, yeah, so yeah. On, how, how does that happen in a way that outcomes focus towards them and not people who perhaps want cosmetic surgery or whatever? Sure. Um, well, that's about the ethos of the system, the values which underpin and drive the system. And they come and go somewhat. They've been relatively enduring over the long term, 60 years. Um, but government by government express those values somewhat differently and with more um, clarity, depending on which particular government. Uh, the last government, for example, was very clear about what it wanted to achieve with the New Zealand public health system. Uh, this government has a slogan or two, but it, it, it's articulation of the, its core values in respect of the health system is yet to mature. So you're saying get informed, join lobby groups, become aware, write letters, do all, do all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I do. And I think that at an individual level, what individuals can do is have robust philosophical debates with themselves and with family and friends mm. about what a package of rights citizenship brings with it. What can people legitimately expect as of right by, by virtue of being a New Zealand citizen? So to elevate the discussion above the pragmatics of restructuring and so on? I think that what will sustain a news, uh, the public health system or the public education system or any other aspect of the New Zealand welfare state for that matter is a broad public commitment to the values which underpin that system. And if that gets eroded particularly if it loses middle class support, then the system will um, uh, diminish over time. Thank you very much.